driving a taxi cab should be a requirement or a prerequisite for life. When I go home at night and I sit on my sofa, my body's still vibrating from the motions of the car. What do I like? The money. That's it, I don't like the customers. I was surprised, like, there's some street that exists in the city I never knew about, even though after driving a few years. Taxi driving is like fishing because when you uh, pick somebody up, you never know if they're going to want to just go around the block, we call that a shorty, or they're going to want to go all the way to Oshkosh. You know, you meet so many different people, but yet you're, you're alone. In New York City, taxi cabs are part of the landscape. They are at the heart of the city's central nervous system. New York could not run without them. Thirteen thousand yellow cabs, two hundred and forty million passengers every year, a two billion dollar business, and forty-two thousand cab drivers. Eighty-two percent of cabbies—that's how New Yorkers call yellow cab drivers—are foreigners attracted by the American dream. I'm from India. I am from Bangladesh. I'm Lebanon. From Turkey. Why so many immigrants? because by working 12 to 16 hours a day, you can earn a lot. Well, much more than in your country of origin. Originally, I'm a Greek. I'm from Pakistan. I'm Romanian, from Romania. New York is a huge melting pot where everything is done to welcome new immigrants. Each community tries, nevertheless, not to forget its own culture. You can feel at home very quickly here, especially if you found a good job. This is one uh, great job for uh, people they just came in this country, you know, immigrants and this and that. It's a tough job, very tough, but make you, you know, make you easy living. At airports, waiting time for a driver can be from two to three hours for a $30 to $40 fare into the city. Here you can find anywhere from 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning until 10.30, 11 o'clock at night, you can find probably at least a thousand taxis constantly. So the parking lot sometimes turns into a recreation or a game room. It's actually a break for the cab drivers. You know, it's, it's really, uh, you have to hustle in New York. It's, as everybody knows, it's a tough traffic and it's, it's very, you know, it's not easy to be a cab driver in New York. So uh, we take the opportunity here to, you know, to take a break. It's 1010 wins, news, weather, traffic, and more on air, online, and on demand at 1010wins.com. Now the lottery numbers on 1010 wins in New York, the daily 442, lucky sum 10. Coming for traffic and transit on the bonds, and here's Bill Gagan. Chris heading downtown with the FTR Drive, still slowing just a bit between the Manhattan Bridge and the Brooklyn Bridge, and that road work with the Cross Bronx Expressway eastbound. A couple lanes are closed over by the Bronx River Parkway. In New York, most cab drivers begin and end their day in the garage from which they rent their vehicle. Here, you notice that not all drivers are recent immigrants. I'm retired from corporations, so I got bored at home and I need something to do, so I do this part-time. Well, I've been a businessman before. I got, uh, I became old. I'm 62 years old now, so I choose to keep on working, so I, I'm a taxi driver now. 99% of New York cab drivers are men. That leaves 1%. Jill Pfeiffer. It's just a very natural progression in, in my life to become a cab driver. Most drivers led totally different lives before entering the world of driving a taxi. I have done so many different things. I was a medical secretary, uh, I was a sales girl in Bloomingdale's. Um, I was a math tutor. I'm not professional, you know, doctor, engineer, you know. That's why I choose taxi. There are no set channels to become a taxi driver. Above all, you must be willing to work to earn money. 
Hassan Majdi is of Palestinian origin. I drove a limousine, I had a store, and before that I went to college. <laughs> Strange combination. Thanks to numbered streets and rectilinear avenues, it's easy to find your way in New York. Whatever their origins, taxi drivers know their way around like the inside of their pocket. They have learned the language and have learned the streets and know what they're doing and are very good at it. They are way better at it than I am, and I am from this city. To drive a cab, you must be at least 19 years old, have a valid driver's license, take classes and an exam. Terry Gilbert. The city has mandatory requirements uh, for people to receive their, their taxi licenses, and uh, we provide those services, as well as uh, optional services for people who have trouble with the English language and uh, the geography and the map reading. That intersection times 12 times square. Test question, where is Times Square? 42nd and Broadway. 42nd Street and Broadway. OK, I'm at 42nd Street and Broadway. To get a license in New York City is not that hard, but it can take some time. In which district is Times Square? Theater district. <laughs> the theater district. The minimum requirement to get a, uh, a New York City taxi license uh, would be three days of training in taxi subjects, one day in defensive driving, and then you'd have to pass an exam, and the exams take anywhere from oh, three to four hours. No one knows taxi drivers better than former drivers. David Pollack was a cabbie for 32 years. Now he publishes a paper for cab drivers. Having drivers from over 190 countries driving yellow cabs in New York City, um, you'll probably find a driver from your country. And what do passengers think of cab drivers? Opinions vary. I think they're interesting. A lot of people have a lot of them as patients. A lot of them have PhDs from their countries. Not very polite, reckless driving. Great drivers and very courteous, yes. They know where everything is. Uh, they, their driving skills are incredible, and they are, they're very, they got good personalities. Crazy. They're OK, but they're not American. Americans are not. They're often seen as a sort of ambassador of the city. I think that we are diplomats. Uh, in, in the sense that we are the first and last person that most people see in New York City. Ambassadors, diplomats, cab drivers are a reflection of the city and their cars icons. This belief dates back from the Checker, the famous yellow checkered cab that ran in the city for more than 40 years. By the way, why are yellow cabs yellow? Because they're not black. Why is the sky blue? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not sure, maybe it makes them more visible, especially at night. To be different from uh, normal cars. There was a study done in the 1920s and uh, by a university in the United States. And the findings of this study were that yellow is the most visible color amongst all other colors. And that's why yellow taxis are yellow. But having a yellow car is not enough. A small but very important accessory is needed. This is a medallion, the city license. In the 40s, it was $25. Today, it's going for $450,000. Cab drivers who want to own a cab mortgage it like they would a house. The medallion is the real key to success. Having your own medallion so as to not depend on a garage is the dream of all New York cab drivers. I'm Johnny Marks. Like many drivers, Johnny Marks holds two jobs. He's also a photographer. When he's at the wheel, his camera is never far away. Cab drivers are independent contractors. When they get their license, they are their own boss. That's the best thing about driving a cab. That's what attracts so many people. Brett Dowdle is an actor. He drives a cab to pay his rent and to earn some extra money. He rents his cab by the week and shares it with a friend. That way, the car is on the streets 24 hours a day. All right, so right now I'm uh, about to pay my, uh, my weekly lease, which uh, this week is going to be 1250 
people who work at the garage are not exactly person, people who are friendly and warm and charming. They're mean and nasty, and they just want your money. I've worked at garages where they've kept me waiting three hours, three and a half hours for a car. And then you have to take care of the dispatcher. You have to throw them a couple of dollars to get a car. Even that doesn't work. Usually I work uh, minimum 12 hours. The, the one benefit that I have about renting a, a car myself is that I can pick and choose which hours I work. Taxi drivers are often independent, individualistic, and solitary characters. But they're also explorers. Driving a taxi is the best way to discover New York. Every single day, I find something that I have never seen before. The Lower East Side, an area located in Southeast Manhattan. In New York, nothing ever stays still. Everything changes, even the neighborhoods. A few years back, the Lower East Side was a shady area, a place of ill repute, where many mafia bosses, among them Al Capone, started their careers. Today, the whole area is rapidly evolving. Right now, we're on uh, Ludlow and uh, Rivington. This is uh, an area that's changed um, throughout the years. It's become real popular. As you can see, there's uh, quite a few uh, different shops around. There's uh, a really popular candy store. Biggest candy store in New York. They have like uh, a lot of like the old candy. I, I used to smoke these when I was a kid. These uh, bubblegum cigars. I, I couldn't find them anywhere. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't think they made them anymore. For Brett. A taxi driver must be inquisitive, always on the lookout for what is happening in the remote corners of the city. Music coming from somewhere? Let's open the door and find out. If you go further up the block, there's art galleries off Rivington that are, they're hidden. I mean, I, you, you wouldn't even know they existed. They're, they're up these streets. Diallo Amadou comes from Senegal. He feels that the New York police watches over taxis a little too closely, that they're a little too present. But he's an experienced driver. He knows how to outsmart them. This car you see here is, is, the, police, is the police car. No, it's a taxi. You look, no, it's a police car. You see the antenna up here, the roof? The, the police car. A fake cab. But how can you tell a fake one from a real one? The, the number, the plate and the roof is not the same. Yes, a real cab carries the same number on its roof, its medallion, and its license plate. Only the police got a right to, to do that. Cab drivers know many things, like some exceptional places. Taxi drivers sometimes can help you with the, some of the best places in New York City to eat. For example, is a donut plant in Grand Street between Essex and Norfolk, which is, carries about 70 different varieties of donuts. Thank you. The cranberry is pretty good. One of the places you can go to, a small hamburger joint in Allegro Hotel in New York City. 56th Street, in a cathedral setting, past a majestic entrance hall, the curtain rises on an all-American burger place. It was surprising that they opened a hamburger joint in Allegro Hotel in New York City with all the restaurants around you, but it looks like it's good, and people are lining up every day at lunchtime to buy hamburgers from there. We are right now in Chelsea, in front of Chelsea Piers, across the street. 
we were standing underneath a building which is with a new concept in New York City, which is a sky garage. You can rent your apartment or buy your apartment, drive your car into the elevator, takes you to the same level of your apartment. You park it there, you step outside, you are in your living room. We are right now in the Bowery and in front of the old CBGB. During the second half of the 20th century, CBGB's was the mecca for underground rock. And the Bowery was one of the most sordid avenues in New York City. Today, art galleries have replaced old gang haunts and new venues have given a newfound youth to the neighborhood. This is the new museum. It was reopened in December 2007. It's like a strange architect, but it looks good because of the space it gives and the light it gives to the museum by building like with the steel and like boxes shifted from one place to another. Who would have thought a few years ago that a contemporary art museum would rise in the heart of the Bowery? In Manhattan, streets and avenues are numbered, but not all of them. There is a neighborhood where the strict American numbering system has given way to something a little more original. Right now we are in Alphabet City, and it's uh, given the nickname because the avenues are called, instead of numbers, by the letters A, B, C, and D. This is, the sign says 13th Street and Avenue A. This is the beginning of Alphabet City. Alphabet City is an atypical neighborhood. But there are many more in New York City. This is the bridge that connects you from Queens to Roosevelt Island. It's a small island in Queens. They look into the tip of Manhattan with a lot of buildings, complexes, uh, apartment buildings. Low income to middle class people live in there. On Roosevelt Island, Many apartment complexes are called projects. When you say a project, you think about drugs and uh, alcohol, prostitutes, all that stuff. It's not that area. The area is like a city in the countryside, or the countryside in the city, with one major advantage, the view on Manhattan. It's one of the best view point if you want to look at the city. But you have to be able to get there. If not by taxi, how do you do it? I don't think there is an island train station. It's buses, or that telefree gets you into the Roosevelt Island and then the buses, or you can walk to wherever you are living here. You can swim if you want. <laughs> Swimming across the river, not recommended. But there might be another solution. In 2002, we started, my partner Douglas and I started the Water Taxi to connect the neighborhoods, parks, and cultural attractions around the harbor together. And Tom Fox created the Water Taxi. Of course, you cannot hail a water taxi, but they're painted yellow nevertheless. All the other boats in New York Harbor are white or blue, and we wanted to catch people's eye. And I grew up as a kid really liking checker cabs. So we painted the boat yellow with the black and white checks. And we only had three boats, and people thought we had 10. And now that we have 10 boats, people think we have 30, because they see them all over the harbor. We have 
10 different locations where you can jump on and off the boat. Thanks to water taxis, you avoid traffic to go to work or to visit the city. Tom Fox has always had plenty of ideas to bring man closer to his environment. Uh, I used to be a green gorilla when I was young. I, uh, we turned vacant lots into gardens. And the boat was landing in Queens, and there was a big vacant lot next to the boat. So I asked the Port Authority if they would let me build a beach. And Tom Fox created Water Taxi Beach. They said yes, and we dumped a thousand tons of sand on the vacant lot. We put in a tent and volleyball courts and a tiki bar, and it's become a really popular attraction. During the day, it's a place for families, and then at night, the young hipsters come out, and there's music and dancing. It's, it's a great place. That's right. All you need to put up a beach is water and some sand. And let the party begin. Taxi bike, rickshaw, cyclo, here they're called pedicabs. They weave in and out of traffic with ease. Carbon dioxide emissions, zero. That's the reason they're so successful right now. Excuse me, ladies. But aren't they a bit dangerous? It's not dangerous because I'm a professional, you know. <laughs> Ivan Petrenko is Ukrainian. We are on the 5th Avenue and 48th Street. Actually, the Fifth Avenue is most expensive avenue in New York City because over there is a lot of expensive markets. Apart from being a professional, the pedicab operator must also be an excellent guide. There are a lot of markets with jewels, diamonds, gold. It's all on the Fifth Avenue. You can see that. Which is a church, the famous church in New York City. Uh, the religion here is like a Catholics. Okay, the information can sometimes be a little vague, but you can't know everything. There are so many buildings in New York City. I don't know about that. I rent this bike for 150 per week to my boss, and I gotta pay from each two to my boss. The system is quite similar to that of the yellow cabs, but one thing is sure, you need to be in good shape. One obvious advantage of the pedicab, you can go places where cars cannot. So this is the 7th Avenue entrance to the park. We're at the corner of Central Park South and 7th Avenue. Mehdi is from Morocco. He speaks eight languages with a preference for French. As you can see, carriages are very popular and unique. They've been in the park for dozens of years. Long before pedicabs and yellow cabs, Horse-drawn carriages were the common mode of transportation in the city. An old drinking trough at the entrance of Central Park reminds us of a time when the city counted more than 150,000 horses. Connor McHugh is Irish. As quite a few of the carriage drivers uh, are Irish guys originally. I got involved in this business. I knew somebody who was in this business at the time, and uh, here I am. What's the use of riding around New York in a carriage? Well, it's an excellent remedy against stress. Most of what you do in New York when you're here is running around. Usually you see that everybody seems to move faster here than everywhere else, and you sort of get into this same habit. So this is where you can sort of relax and, uh, and sort of go back in time a little bit. And it's romantic too. 
An oasis of greenery in the heart of a forest of skyscrapers, Central Park is the largest urban park in the United States. It's filled with unusual places. This park right in front of us is Strawberry Fields. John Lennon used to spend most of his time here before he was murdered. Many free concerts are held in Central Park throughout the summer. If you look across the park here, these two towers were in the movie Ghostbusters. They're called the San Remo Towers. Demi Moore, the actress, lives in the penthouse there. Dustin Hoffman and Diane Keaton also live in this building. This area on your left is called Sheep Meadow. Sheep used to graze here from 1890 until the Great Depression of the 1930s. Today, tanning enthusiasts have replaced the sheep. But ducks, turtles, and horses can still be found. Central Park was supposed to be an oasis that would not have the everyday aspects of life. It was the wealthy people of New York who said, we want to be able to take our carriages into the park. And the designer made the concession and said, OK, I will allow you, but only your nicest horse and your nicest carriage. Where there are horses, there are stables. Because here, like everywhere else, a horse needs a roof over its head. And since New York is a vertical city, carriages are parked on the ground floor, and horses, they stay on the upper levels. In New York, the diversity of means of transportation is astonishing. One thing you should know, when you're in New York City and you hail a cab and put your hand up, the only car by law allowed to pick you up is a yellow taxi cab. And yet, not all cabs are yellow. Oh, there are other cabs, gypsy cabs. Gypsy cabs. What do gypsies have to do with New York taxis? Because we go freely from anywhere to anywhere. We usually transport people from Queens or Bronx or Brooklyn to Manhattan unless somebody uh, calls us from Manhattan to our phone number and uh, then we pick them up. Gypsy cabs are usually luxury cars and as such, they need to be cared for. It's all part of a routine. Routine, a word that does not exist for some drivers. Remember Brett, the part-time actor? Sometimes he wears a costume. On this occasion, a Sikh costume. South of the city, the financial district still bears the marks of 9-11. Yeah, a few years ago, you were able to drive through uh, Wall Street but uh, since the terrorist attacks in 9-11, they had uh, they had blocked off uh, a lot of the streets, and uh, you really can't drive through it anymore. Wall Street and the New York Stock Exchange, the epicenter of world finance, are now only accessible by foot. Despite the relaxed atmosphere, this is one of the United States' safest areas. It is absolutely forbidden to park here. 
we've been sitting here for about at least a half hour and uh, haven't gotten stopped once or questioned what we were doing. I mean, there's a big no parking, no standing sign over here. Nobody stopped us, nobody asked us anything. I mean, I've seen a few people looking at me like I was crazy, but no police stopped us. Security in the financial district may not seem infallible. That's because despite its excessiveness, the city has always kept a human dimension. There are a lot of alleys, uh, streets that are just one block and two blocks, and it's always interesting finding those. My favorite street is a street called Washington Mews. And I found it driving a taxi cab. It's between Fifth Avenue and University Place down near Washington Square Park. Yes, New York can become festive when it needs to. Some streets are closed to traffic on Sundays and turn into places of relaxation. In the middle of the summer, this relaxed atmosphere and a little dose of madness reach the heart of the city, Times Square. Now I'm the naked cowboy. Keeping it real for you. I'm a naked cowboy. You gotta do what you gotta do. I'm the naked sensation. Yeah, does that need to Swinging my butt in undies and down. Playing the same damn tune. I'm a naked cowboy. Keeping it real for you. This real cowboy is a real businessman. Posing with him will set you back a few dollars. More than 600,000 people ride a New York cab every day. Even though he's locked in his yellow cell, the supposedly solitary cabbie meets a lot of people. I'm mostly working in the daytime in Manhattan. We are dealing either with the New Yorkers going to work, going home, going shopping, or tourists going to tourist attractions. I must have had a couple of thousand people in my cab already, and I've only had two people that were not really, really nice people. Actually, I like to look at us as the uh, psychologists of the world. Where sometimes we're psychologists, sometimes we're politicians, on occasion gynecologists. Most people feel, well, you know, I'm in this cab for an average, I think the average fare is uh, less than 10 minutes and about $8 or $9. And they feel, we'll never see the taxi driver again. So they open their hearts up sometimes are telling us stuff that they may not tell an intimate one. People are very rushed, you know? Everybody say, okay, we want to go fast, 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 you know? Over here, if you miss one light, people get mad. They don't want to waste one minute. <laughs> Passengers are not the only ones who can get mad because of traffic. Let's go, you asshole. A lot of times you pick some people up and they, uh, they just, they had a bad day, and, and they're gonna take it out on the cab driver. Driving conditions in New York are the worst of all in the United States, so some drivers only work at night. Considering driving at night, because I really intensely dislike the traffic that I encounter during the day. But at the same time, there will be another set of problems with driving at night um, because I'm, I'm a female. Almost every driver, male or female, has experienced some sort of mishap during his shift, be it day or night. I had a friend of mine that he was stopped at a light and he had his window open and uh, Somebody put a knife to his throat, you know, and demanded the money. People know cab drivers have money on them. I mean, it's, the, you, you know, you could have a couple hundred dollars on you at night. So when, whenever, like, I'm 
I'm in a bad neighborhood. I try to uh, always look around, I'll, you know, maybe keep the doors locked and uh, just be careful. When you're constantly driving around the city, your life can become a tad adventurous. I was sitting out in front of Hogs and Heifers, which is a, a kind of a wild bar in the meatpacking district in Manhattan. And all of a sudden, I felt a guy bump me. One day, they attacked me in East New York to take my money. Uh, until now, I don't, because that, I don't want to like work like nighttime. So I turned around, what's going on? Well, it turned out to be a truck, and the guy got so indignant that I was upset that he hit me in the, with his truck that he pulled out an ax. A long-handled ax and started swinging it at me, you know, and I'm like ducking this ax. Sometimes they get people, they get in the car and they, I hear like a funny sound, like And next thing you know, I turn around, I look back and the guy is like, uh, smoking a crack pipe, you know? For a long time, New York was one of the most dangerous cities in the U.S. Today, it is one of the safest, but some risky neighborhoods still exist. To spot them, sometimes all you have to do is watch for old shoes. That was the main meaning that there was uh, some sort of drug dealing on, on that block. Go! 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 Taxi drivers are not always safe from danger, so they take precautions. Brett has enrolled in a self-defense class. You know, we're not allowed to carry any weapons. I mean, of course, there's a tire iron in the back of the trunk, but I mean, I, I've never used anything. <laughs> Smile. Nowadays, you might be filmed or photographed while riding in a cab. Several security measures were taken to ensure the safety of cab drivers and deter the ill-disposed. This is the partition that was mandated by the city of New York in uh, the 1970s after 18 taxi drivers were murdered. Most of the taxi drivers do not have them closed. They drive with them open. And why do they drive with them open? Because they want to communicate with you. New York changes at night, it becomes a different planet. New Yorkers also are not the same. The driver, who feels lonelier than ever, sometimes prefers to slip into a different character. My name is Guptamir, and I, I've been driving a taxi only uh, about uh, two, two days right now. I just come to uh, New York. I wanted to fulfill the American dream. Right now, I am driving around and I'm looking to make, make some money. Right here, this is um, the club 230 on 5th. And what is here, there is actually a rooftop bar. One of the um, most popular clubs down here is to the left. This is uh, called Le Souk. What? Girls Gone Wild India. Let, let us see something for the camera. <laughs> Often at night, New Yorkers let go and get a bit crazy. Cab drivers are on the front line to observe the phenomenon. Very late on weekend evenings, Friday nights after a hard week of work, or Saturday evenings, a lot of couples, uh, how shall I say, have foreplay in the back seat. Um, I don't really mind. Pick up this couple. They say, can you take us to Brooklyn? We're driving a few blocks, and uh, the girl, she asked me, she's like, uh, can, can I ask you something? I said, sure. 
And she said, uh, do people ever have uh, sex in the back of your car? And I said, uh, no, not really. The one thing all cab drivers hate is picking up drunks. Because if you speak to every taxi driver in New York City, I guarantee you at least one time they had to clean up after a drunk. She just says, uh, do you mind if we do? Like two minutes later, I see the little guy he's standing up in the back, and I, and I turn around, and she's half naked, and they're going at it in my back seat. The night world is impersonal. Human beings are slowly being replaced by machines, most of the time for safety reasons. But fortunately, there are exceptions, and they are successful. This guy over here on 53rd Street, the, the line that he has is incredible. I mean, I, I've heard stories about him. I, I heard that they offered him a couple of million dollars for his uh, location. Chicken, lamb, rice, but most of all, excellent marketing for a magic sauce with secret ingredients. Somebody else told me that his uh, wife did some kind of witchcraft over the chicken to make, uh, to make it so popular. A cab driver's perk, he doesn't have to stand in line. But Brett would love to take his girlfriend to a real restaurant. I wish I could like meet a girl, go out to dinner or something. But I mean, the truth of the matter is, I don't have time. I have uh, one friend of mine, he's married, but I guess maybe that's because he got married before he became a cab driver. But isn't driving a cab an excellent way to meet your soulmate? You need a taxi? I got in a cab once a week or two ago, and the dude was just like a raving lunatic. Like, he started being friendly, which I always am, you know. But then he was telling me about his gallbladder problems. Would you go out with a taxi driver? <laughs> if I met someone, honest, if I met someone and they were like, I drive a cab, I'd be like, okay, cool. Can I smoke in your cab? It's kind of illegal. But, Isn't uh, this illegal? Yeah, actually, it is illegal. But I mean, if you if you keep it down, I guess I guess it's all right. The night world is a place where rules tend to fade away and where you can lose your bearings. A world where fantasy takes over reality. Driving a taxi at night is like flying a small spaceship towards the unknown. Point two miles, turn right in point two miles, turn right. Driving in New York is like driving in a video game. Taxi drivers are crazy. You gotta watch for them when they walk, when, when you walk in the streets. Oh yeah, they sure do not hit. stop. Yeah. They do not stop from anyone. It's all about me, me, me. There's always something happening on the right and the left, on the front and back people stopping, people honking, ambulances, police cars. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So you, just, you have to be at attention the whole time, like. Some neighborhoods are a bit shady by day, and a lot more by night. Nighttime drivers 
you might have a lot of stories with them different than me because you're dealing with a different crowd. Maybe still in New Yorkers, but at night they are different. But drivers know that in New York, neighborhoods can evolve rapidly. There's a lover in my life. He sends me gifts some flowers. Harlem, for instance, has experienced a genuine rebirth. The danger of the neighborhood is no longer what it used to be. You gotta be careful, because there's a, a lot of pretty girls out there, and you, you take your eye off, off the road to look at them, and you get into an accident. The meatpacking district is another area that has experienced important changes over the years. Basically, the meatpacking district is uh, it's a meat market. I mean, it, it's, it's an area where there's a lot of clubs and bars and lounges. Uh, in the daytime, it's actually uh, an industrial area. But at nighttime, it becomes an actual meat market of flesh. Years ago, it wasn't a place where you wanted to come because it was known for prostitution. But now, it's a very popular uh, destination for uh, people who want to party at night. All right, the other foot. Whoa! At night, you have to show off. New Yorkers abandon cabs in favor of something more imposing, the limousine, the limo. Uh, the cars, all the uh, electronics are on the side panel on the passenger side of the car. Radio heat and all the lights are controlled by that panel. You rent a limo to go to a show or to cruise Times Square or 42nd Street an area that also has seen a lot of changes. In the early 60s, mid 60s, 70s and 80s, there were a lot of uh, peep show or sleazy uh, places. Now it's cleaned up, it's really improved. As soon as the neon lights go on, Times Square goes nuts. Times Square, New York, Times Square, New York. Cabby is part of the soul of New York. He's his own boss, a free electron in the city. The job may be tough, but he knows that it's an experience he'll never regret. I miss driving a taxi. There's an element of freedom that, uh, that comes with it. If you have a stressful job with a cubicle in an office, um, no window, you may think, is this what my life is? And then you get into a taxi cab and you see the thousands of people on every corner every time there's a red light. Uh, you get to communicate with 25 or 30 different fares uh, each shift. You're working, you know, 12 hours a day, five, six days a week. It's hard to do anything. I mean, on my day off, I don't, I don't do anything but sleep. Surrounded by millions, yet lonely, making countless yet short-lived encounters, the job is really a two-sided one. 
can you be a taxi driver and have a normal family life? Uh, it's tough. You meet everybody on their way someplace or on their way back from someplace. Um, you'll meet some famous people, you'll meet uh, interesting people from uh, all over the world. You know, you meet so many different people, but yet you're, you're alone. You will hear so many stories of taxi drivers putting their children through college to become doctors and lawyers. Um, it's rewarding, you know, if you can put up with it for a long time and, you know, benefit the next generation through your hard work. Whatever their country of origin, cab drivers know they're building the future. They're actors in a play about New York City. They're part of the American dream. Sometimes I'll actually just drive here uh, just to view the, uh, the scenery. It's so beautiful. It reminds me of something out of a movie. The whole city's fascinating. I would not have traded the experience of driving a cab for anything. It's probably the most interesting thing I've ever done.